Get ready to be amazed. Have you ever wondered about the rich history and cultural heritage of Ghana? A nation on the West African coast, Ghana is a treasure trove of historical sites and cultural landmarks that tell tales of resilience, creativity, and unity. The country's past is a rich tapestry woven with threads of colonial influence, resistance against oppression, and a vibrant culture that has withstood the test of time. Our journey begins at the Cape Coast Castle, a poignant reminder of the transatlantic slave trade era. This UNESCO World Heritage Site stands as a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of great adversity. From there, we move on to the Elmina Castle, another crucial landmark in the narrative of Ghana's history. This castle, steeped in the shadows of the past, offers a sobering insight into the country's history, making it a must-visit for anyone eager to delve deeper into Ghana's past. In the city of Kumasi we find the Kumasi Fort, a symbol of the Ashanti Kingdom's resistance against British colonial rule. This fort stands as a beacon of courage, reminding us of the indomitable spirit of the Ghanaian people. Our journey then takes us to the Larabanga Mosque, one of the oldest mosques in West Africa. This architectural marvel holds great significance for Ghana's Muslim population and is a testament to the country's religious diversity. We also explore the Asante traditional buildings, a showcase of the architectural prowess of the Asante people. These buildings, now part of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites, offer a glimpse into the unique architectural heritage of Ghana. Our journey wouldn't be complete without a visit to the Jamestown Lighthouse in one of the oldest districts in Ghana, the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park in downtown Accra, Independence Square, also known as Black Star Square, and the National Museum of Ghana. Each of these landmarks tells a unique story about Ghana's past, adding to the rich tapestry of the country's history. So buckle up as we embark on a fascinating journey through Ghana's past. Each step we take unravels a new chapter in the captivating narrative of this West African nation, offering a unique insight into the rich history and cultural heritage of Ghana. Our first stop is the Cape Coast Castle, a significant historical site. This imposing edifice perched on the Atlantic coast of Ghana served a pivotal role during the transatlantic slave trade. For over 300 years, it was a key departure point for millions of African men, women and children who were forcefully shipped to the Americas and the Caribbean. The Cape Coast Castle was not just a slave fort, it was a cog in a larger, brutal system of human trafficking that spanned continents. It's a place of sorrow, of memory, but also a place of reflection on the resilience of the human spirit. Today this castle is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, a recognition of its global historical significance. It stands as a monument to a painful past but also as a beacon, a reminder of the need for humanity to strive for justice, equality, and freedom. Cape Coast Castle stands as a stark reminder of a dark chapter in human history. Next we visit Elmina Castle, another important site related to the slave trade. Constructed by the Portuguese in the 15th century, this castle was the first trading post built on the Gulf of Guinea. Elmina Castle is a stark reminder of the pivotal role Ghana played in the transatlantic slave trade. This fortress, originally erected for the gold trade, later became a crucial hub for human trade. It's a heart-wrenching testament to the dark past and resilience of the Ghanaian people. Its weather-beaten walls echo stories of countless lives that pass through its door of no return. Today, it stands not as a symbol of despair, but as a beacon of hope and a testament to the indomitable human spirit. It's a place that bears witness to a painful history, yet inspires a hopeful future. Elmina Castle, a must-visit for anyone interested in understanding Ghana's past. Moving on to the city of Kumasi, we find the Kumasi Fort. This fort, nestled in the heart of the city, is more than just a structure. It's a symbol of the Ashanti Kingdom's undying spirit of resistance against British colonial rule. The Ashanti people, known for their strength and courage, used this fort as a bastion during the Anglo-Ashanti Wars, standing their ground against the overwhelming might of the British Empire. Their determination and resilience are etched in the very stones of the fort, telling a tale of a people who wouldn't yield. The fort, with its robust walls and strategic location, played a crucial role in the Ashanti's resistance, serving as a beacon of hope and defiance in the face of adversity. Today the fort stands as a testament to the Ashanti's indomitable spirit reminding us of a time when the kingdom fought tooth and nail to preserve their sovereignty. The Kumasi fort symbolizes the unyielding spirit of the Ashanti people. Now we head towards the Larabanga Mosque, one of the oldest mosques in West Africa. 
This architectural marvel has stood the test of time and remains a significant site for Ghana's Muslim population. Constructed in the Sudanese architectural style, the Larabanga Mosque is a testament to the rich history of Islam in Ghana and its enduring presence. It's not just a place of worship, but also a beacon of historical significance, attracting scholars and historians from all over the world. The mosque's unique design with its wooden protrusions and compact cuboid shape is a fascinating sight to behold. Each element of the mosque tells a story of centuries-old traditions and the enduring faith of the Muslim community. The Larabanga Mosque is not just a place of worship, it's a symbol of unity, a testament to religious tolerance and a beacon of diversity. The Larabanga Mosque standing tall is a testament to Ghana's religious diversity. Next, we explore the Asante traditional buildings. These distinctive structures are a testament to the architectural prowess of the Asante people, one of the ethnic groups in Ghana. Built primarily from timber and earth, these buildings are characterized by their unique bas-relief wall decorations, which often depict significant cultural symbols and proverbs. The Asante traditional buildings are more than just homes, they serve as a physical manifestation of the Asante people's cosmology. Each architectural element in these buildings carries a deeper meaning, reflecting the people's spiritual beliefs, social structure, and their relationship with the environment. These buildings are not just a marvel of traditional architecture but also a rich tapestry of Asante history and culture. They tell a story of a people's resilience, creativity, and deep connection with their heritage. Today these buildings are recognized as UNESCO World Heritage Sites, a testament to their global cultural significance. These buildings are not just structures but a showcase of Asante's rich cultural heritage. We now move to Jamestown, one of the oldest districts in Ghana. A place where the past intertwines with the present, Jamestown is a living testament to Ghana's rich history. Among the charming colonial-era buildings and vibrant street life, the Jamestown Lighthouse stands tall, a beacon of history that has weathered the test of time. Constructed by the British in the 1930s, the lighthouse has ever since been guiding ships safely into the harbor, its light piercing through the densest fog. But it isn't just a guide for sailors. For us, it is a symbol of resilience a reminder of Ghana's colonial past and its journey to independence. The lighthouse is more than just a structure, it's a storyteller, silently narrating tales of the past, of the people who have come and gone, of the changes that have swept over Jamestown. It's a symbol of continuity amidst change, a constant in an ever-evolving world. The Jamestown Lighthouse, a beacon guiding us through Ghana's history. Our journey continues through the Volta, Greater Accra, central and western regions. As we traverse these areas, we find ourselves surrounded by an array of forts and castles, each standing as a testament to Ghana's rich and diverse history. In the Volta region we encounter Fort Prinzenstein, a Danish fort built in the late 17th century. This fort is a stark reminder of the transatlantic slave trade, as it was used to hold slaves before they were shipped off to the New World. Today, it stands as an important historical site, echoing the narratives of those who were forced to leave their homes. Moving on to the Greater Accra region we stumble upon the Grand Usher Fort. Built by the Dutch in the mid-17th century, it later became a prison under British rule. Despite its turbulent past, the fort now serves as a museum, offering a glimpse into the realities of life during these times. Next we journey to the central region, home to the majestic Cape Coast Castle. This castle, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, was a major hub during the transatlantic slave trade. Its captivating architecture and haunting history draw in visitors from around the globe. Finally we venture to the western region where we find Fort Metal Cross. Originally named Fort Dick's Cove after the nearby fishing village, this British fort is a striking symbol of the colonial era. Overlooking the Atlantic Ocean, the fort's strategic location is a stark reminder of the power dynamics of the past. Each of these forts and castles holds a unique place in Ghana's history, from serving as hubs of the slave trade to standing as symbols of colonial power. They have witnessed the changing tides of time, playing silent witness to the triumphs and tribulations of this vibrant nation. Each fort and castle has its own story, adding to the rich tapestry of Ghana's history. They stand not just as architectural marvels, but as poignant reminders of the past, inviting us to delve deeper into the fascinating chapters of Ghana's journey through the ages. We now visit the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park in downtown Accra. This serene oasis in the heart of the city is dedicated to a pivotal figure in Ghana's history. Kwame Nkrumah, 
the first prime minister and president of Ghana. Nkrumah played a crucial role in steering the nation towards independence in the mid-20th century, shaping its narrative and carving out its place in the world. The park, in all its tranquility, mirrors the peace and unity that Nkrumah strived for as a leader. It's a place of reflection where one can immerse themselves in the legacy of a man who was not just a politician, but a visionary. Every element of the park, from the majestic statue of Nkrumah to the museum housing personal artifacts of his life, echoes the profound impact he had on Ghana. The park is a tribute to a leader who shaped Ghana's destiny. Next stop, Independence Square, an important landmark in Accra. Known also as Black Star Square, this location holds a pivotal place in the heart of Ghana. Its significance lies not only in its grandeur, but also in what it represents, a symbol of the country's independence and unity. Built to commemorate Ghana's liberation from colonial rule, the square is a testament to the resilience and strength of its people. It's here where the joyous shouts of freedom first echoed, where the flag of an independent Ghana was first hoisted, marking a new chapter in the country's history. Today, Independence Square continues to be a focal point for gatherings and celebrations. It's where Ghanaians come together to celebrate their national pride during public holidays and significant events. From the annual Independence Day celebrations to the inauguration of presidents, the square is a vibrant display of Ghana's unity and patriotism. Independence Square, a symbol of Ghana's freedom and unity. Finally, we visit the National Museum of Ghana, located in Accra, a treasure trove of history and culture. This museum is the custodian of Ghana's national identity, encapsulating the country's journey from the ancient times to the present. The National Museum of Ghana is home to an extensive collection of historical artifacts, each piece a silent narrator of the country's rich past. The museum's archaeology section offers a captivating journey through time, with exhibits ranging from prehistoric stone tools to relics from the medieval empires that once ruled this land. Venture into the ethnography section and you'll be greeted by a vibrant array of traditional African crafts, intricate kente cloths, ceremonial masks, and handcrafted musical instruments paint a vivid picture of Ghana's diverse ethnic communities and their rich cultural traditions. The museum's art section meanwhile showcases Ghana's creative spirit. Here you'll find an eclectic mix of traditional and contemporary art from intricate wood carvings to thought-provoking sculptures and paintings by Ghanaian artists. But the National Museum of Ghana is more than just a collection of artifacts. It's a place of learning, where visitors can delve into Ghana's history, understand its cultural dynamics, and appreciate the resilience and creativity of its people. Through its exhibits, the museum fosters a deeper understanding of Ghana's past, providing a context for its present and a vision for its future. The museum also plays a crucial role in preserving Ghana's cultural heritage. It is a steward of the nation's history, safeguarding its treasures for future generations. By doing so, it ensures that the stories of Ghana's past continue to resonate, enlightening and inspiring those who come after us. So, whether you're a history buff, an art enthusiast, or simply curious about Ghana's heritage, the National Museum of Ghana is a must-visit. It's not just a museum, it's a journey through time, a celebration of culture, and a tribute to the spirit of a nation. The National Museum of Ghana, a window into the country's rich history and cultural heritage. As we wrap up our journey, we hope you've enjoyed this exploration of Ghana's past. Our voyage took us from the solemn walls of Cape Coast Castle and Elmina Castle, poignant reminders of the transatlantic slave trade, to the resilient Kumasi Fort, a symbol of the Ashanti Kingdom's resistance against colonial rule. We admired the ancient beauty of the Larabanga Mosque and the architectural prowess of the Asante traditional buildings. We were guided through history by the Jamestown Lighthouse and discovered the unique stories of the numerous forts and castles across Volta, Greater Accra, Central and Western regions. We paid homage to a leader at the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park celebrated freedom at Independence Square, and delved into a treasure trove of historical gems at the National Museum of Ghana. These sites offer a glimpse into Ghana's rich history and cultural heritage. They are not just tourist attractions, but also important landmarks that tell the story of Ghana's past. Thank you for joining us on this journey through Ghana's history. We hope that this virtual tour has awakened your curiosity and inspired you to visit these historical sites. By doing so, You'll not only experience the beauty of Ghana's rich history and culture firsthand, but also support the preservation of these vital landmarks.
If you enjoyed this video please remember to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more insightful content like this. Your support allows us to continue producing videos that educate, inspire and connect people to the world's rich and diverse history. Until next time, keep exploring and learning. Remember, every place has a story waiting to be discovered, and you could be the next great explorer. From us here, it's goodbye for now.